Hi, I'm Barbara Bruce, and welcome to Get Out, a weekly virtual broadcast where we invite you to grab your friends and family, your car keys, fill up the gas tank, and get out with us somewhere in the White Mountains. And we are out today, and if you can't tell where we are, you haven't been to Veterans Village. And I am with the Florence Nightingale of the oh. Veterans of the White Mountains, Maggie Hugh. Hi. Hi. You are a household name among the vets and in the community, but if someone doesn't know your name, then they haven't found this place yet, so we need to tell them about it today. Okay. Um. Walking Down Ranch is a Arizona 501c3, and we started doing this way back in 2012, but we got our 501c3 in 2014. And we used to go to food banks and everywhere else and give out everything we could to the veterans, because if they're on food cards or, or assistance, you cannot buy hygiene, you can't buy paper goods, you cannot buy clothes, you cannot fix your headlight if it goes out. And so that was a need that wasn't being taken care of by anybody. And so we just felt that need and then we found more people that needed more. And so one day I got a phone call from the East Mesa Firefighter Charities out of Mesa. And he asked me, because we had been looking for property, and he asked me if I would come look at this facility. And so I met Steve Hayer here, and he walked me around, and every cabin had been vandalized. The grass was up to my chest. It looked pretty poor. It was pretty <laughs> bad shape. And my board and I were here walking around, you know, and the board's going, you're crazy, Maggie, you're crazy. This will never fly. And look where we are today. I mean, <laughs> we have got all 18 cabins refurbished. We're putting in a new $30,000 septic system today. today. It's being done yesterday and today. And yesterday, I paid this off. Oh my I paid goodness. it off. Three years and 10 months it took us. And I mean, it's wow. not me, it's the volunteers, the donors, our supporters, you know, our thrift store. I mean, it, it was everybody in this community has come together. Was it like a mortgage burning? It, well, no, not yet. <laughs> um, but we raised $575,000 and went to the bank yesterday and, and paid it off. And so today on Veterans Day, this will be a forever veterans project wow. for, our, for housing. You know, Maggie, a lot of us uh, get lumps in our throat when we hear the Star Spangled Banner, when we stand and salute the flag. Uh, I was brought up by a father that had been in World War II and Korea. And of course, we had to go to every Veterans Day parade. We always went out and distributed poppies. We did all of those things. And you know, it makes you a better American because you understand. But my dad never told stories mm -mm. until after Tom Brokaw wrote The Greatest Generation. Then we couldn't shut him up. <laughs> but we all want to help veterans. We realize how important they are. And I think the wall that heals, I had seen it in Washington, D.C., and it really touched me because I'm a baby boomer. But to see it here and to see our community come together and realize how many veterans we have up here mm, as they lean down to take the paper and rub it, you know, a friend or a family member. Right. How many veterans are up here? Oh, thousands. Really? Thousands. And, and you know, that wall, I think, was good for some to see. And I have veterans living here that couldn't even talk about it or go. I mean, it was just so heartbreaking that they could not handle the, that my husband was in the military for 12 years and he has friends on that wall, you know, and we went and it was, it was so emotional. I mean, it's just, unless somebody has seen it and been there and dealt with the veterans one-on-one, -on -one, 
it's so emotional for them as well as us that, you know, our, our families served. My dad was in the Navy. I had nine uncles that were in the military and my husband did 12 years. So I don't understand a lot of the things they've gone through. I understand one thing, they're here because they're not well. They're here because they need help. And um, I can offer them things. So every veteran that, that comes into a group of people like we had at the opening today, some of them can't be in a room full of people. Some of them can't uh, be accept. They don't think they're accepted, you know? And, and it's like, I have a saying that says, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Amen. And when, when they come home from the military, they have good work ethics. They have dreams. They want a job. They want to continue with their life. And sometimes they can't. And they have PTSD, but everybody has PTSD. I mean, if you've been really sick, if you've lost a loved one, if you've been in a bad car accident, something abusive in your life. Abusive situation. Abuse. Yeah, there's many things, whether it be at work or at home, whatever. Right. right. So everybody has it. You can heal to a point, but you're never going to forget. And so there's just things that trigger their memories where they can't, you know, where they're not going to forget. And it triggers things. And it's like, they go into a room full of people and all of a sudden they get claustrophobic or whatever. It's like a panic attack. Exactly. And so, you know, I can't stress enough that if they're not here, it's not because they don't want to be, it's because they have these issues they're dealing with. And if they were healthy and they could deal with all of these things, they wouldn't be here with me. What was the spark that made you get so involved in this because there were three of you that started this way mm -hmm. back when and if I remember correctly it was in Concho. Right, Ann Evanente and I were in the American Legion Auxiliary. I was the president for five years, she was secretary treasurer and Al uh, was in the VFW, the American Legion and so um, we had a little bit of a to-do over an election and so we just decided, you know, we need to do more. I don't raise this money to put a pin on my shirt or pat myself on the back. I don't care about that. Florence Nightingale. But, no, it's, it, there's a need, you know, yes. and the need was not being met. And so um, we left the American Legion, 11 of us left the auxiliary that day. And this is when we started just going to the food bank and, and giving out anything we bought. We bought the paper goods, we bought whatever we could and we gave it away. And then all of a sudden people would start bringing us things to give away and, and we would have uh, people hand us a $5 bill. And so that's when we decided we needed to do something else. And so after looking at different properties and everything is when the East Mesa firefighters called and they asked for me to look at this property, and you know it was in shambles, it was horrible. And I think it was gonna be a youth camp, right? They were gonna start a youth camp, and there's like five of them up here. But the problem was, as them being based in East Mesa, every time there was a, uh, an issue with the property, whether it was the main water thing froze, you know, it's $1,000 a piece to replace them, if it was the cabins were broken into, they had to come up and secure it. And um, so it got to be too much. It's like any other nonprofit, you start with 50 people with good hearts and you end up with five doing the work, you know? Always. And that's, that's what we run into, that's what they ran into for them to drive from Mesa up here all the time. And so, uh, you know, I was like thrilled with this property because we're near the bus line. We near the grocery stores. We had 18 cabins that we used to house the veterans. They're near the VA, the hospital. Perfect location. But as the cabins were so bad, we had to take one cabin and we had to gut it, take everything out, refurbish it, put new water in it because nothing had been winterized and all the water lines were froze. Then we end up having to put a whole new water main in from the front street all the way back. Uh, we've had sewer issues ever since we've been here. So hopefully now with a new sewer system, which is like $30,000, 
you know, that I have to put in. Um, but as of yesterday, having this paid off, it's going to be a lot easier to do, you know, the repairs. But, you know, then I, we decided, we stepped in it again. I stepped in it again. <laughs> and bought the pawn shop next door. Yes. Because our thrift store is our sole support. Uh, we have no government grants. We have a couple people now on the board that have come up and they're gonna help write some grants for us for the repairs. But um, once we can get some of the repair costs done, then you know the thrift store pays our utilities and all of that. But I have a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage on that that's due in three years. You got out of debt and then you got right back. I into got it. right back <laughs> into it. We don't have any paid employees. Everybody is a volunteer. Every penny we take in, whether it's in the donation jar over there, or we have little cabins and jars around town, every penny goes here. I, I'm here six days a week, sometimes 10, 12 hours a day. I don't take a salary. No board member gets a salary. My next question was, how many hours do you put in here? Yeah, but you know what, I tell them, and I'll tell anybody, it says that if you're coming here to work and you're looking for a paycheck, you're in the wrong place. Because we're not doing this for the money, we're doing it to help a need that our veterans have earned and they deserve help. So, you know, opening the outreach center today for the grand opening, um, I'm really excited about that. For one thing, it's paid for. Yes. <laughs> but um, the other thing is, is we've got four computers in there where they can come in and research jobs or apartments or information for their medical or DD2s or whatever. They can come in. We have a washer and dryer, laundry facility. Uh, they can come in and take a shower. They can come in and utilize presentations you know, that we have coming in. We had uh, volunteers here, veterans were here. We had uh, a quilting group at a Sholo that brought in 14 quilts for us to give to the veterans. Oh my goodness. And we threw all their names in a hat and pulled the names out and, and gave away 14 quilts. They were absolutely beautiful. All of the material was the patriotic material. My name is Mary Burkhardt and I'm the owner of Simple Modern Quilts down on the Deuce. In our store we were given the opportunity uh, to uh, create about 20 quilts for veterans and so we started our project last July. When I first opened a store, uh, one of my customers approached me and said she had a whole bunch of patriotic fabric that she would like to put into a project for veterans. I thought that was a great idea so we got together and we worked together to create uh, a design for the quilt and to cut the fabric and present it and put it out, created a sample quilt and put our product out for people to take home and sew quilt tops. We didn't charge anything for the fabric and we just asked people to sew and bring them back and then uh, our store then quilted them and finished them and now it took about two and a half, three months to finish the project and as a result, we came up with about 20 quilts for veterans. And today we got to present them. I'm so proud to be able to offer to veterans in our community. From the start, we wanted to give away our quilts to veterans in the White Mountains um, and local veterans and support our local community. I had our ribbon cutting today, just open that up and we had a uh, hospice here bringing us cakes and food and and had a really nice luncheon and so i think it went over well everybody enjoyed it and it's a kickoff for our next endeavor in the old store o'halloran's office uh, he has sent his representatives and they're going to come in once every second wednesday and help people fill out grievance papers if they have issues I'm Derek Duba. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I served on active duty for eight years. I started out as an electronics technician uh, stationed at Fort Hood, and then uh, I re-enlisted to become an Arabic linguist. So I did the following four years in the Military Intelligence Corps. I got the opportunity to travel all around the United States, I spent some time in Northern Africa and Eastern Europe, uh, made lots of awesome friends, and really loved every minute of my service. Um, 
until I was injured in 2017. Changed the trajectory of my life, my career. Um, so I came back home. Came back to Arizona where all my, my family and friends live and got an education. Just tremendously grateful for all the support that I got along my journey. And then uh, recently I've joined uh, Congressman Tom O'Halloran's team as their Wounded Warrior Fellow where I get to pay back a lot of the help that I've got back into the veteran community. Um, I do a lot of casework where I help veterans with issues dealing with the VA, getting their benefits, getting health care. Um, and I just feel tremendously blessed to be able to do that day in, day out, meeting with uh, veterans all around the Arizona's first congressional district and uh, meet awesome people like those here today. And uh, yeah, just uh, enjoying an awesome Veterans Day here. Hi, I'm Chuck Fugate. Uh, retired Navy Chief. This is my wife, Cindy. Well, we're here because um, we get involved with uh, Walking Down Ranch several years ago, doing volunteering and doing um, uh, maintenance and repairs. And uh, today's a special day because uh, the six years that we've been volunteering here become a reality. It's finally been paid for. I was in the Navy for 24 years um, and uh, Vietnam uh, through uh, Grenada and Afghanistan did 12 years at sea and six years with the Marine Corps. I was uh, President Reagan's nurse while he had his uh, surgery. Met my husband in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. We were both deployed with JTF-160. This is really good to see how far Maggie and all the volunteers are for the Veterans Village. We have medical people coming in, hospice coming in to help. Um, so it'll build as people volunteer and say, hey, we can come in and offer this service with veteran services are coming in. So it's going to be like a one-stop shop uh, where they can really get the information they need. They can pull it off the computer. They can print it. They'll have it in hand. And so there's very few places and I don't even know if there is another place where someone who's homeless can come in and do their laundry, take a shower. We give them a voucher to go to the thrift store to get nice, new, clean clothes, and then, um, you know, get on their feet. You know, Maggie, as you say it, you can't help but tear up knowing that uh, people that have served our country are not taken care of because mm -hmm. it's assumed that once they leave the service that they get their discharge papers and then everything is hunky-dory and it's not that way and what I know I'm a person that I hate to ask anybody for anything mm -hmm. I know that there are many people out there especially some of the people you talked about today like that can't come in how do you ask for help how do you how do you get those little things you need that maybe you think it's too big to ask for, but it's really not too big because you have made many wishes come true right here. And you know, they don't feel like they deserve the help. A lot of them just don't have, they just don't think they've done anything special. They don't feel they're deserving of it. And it, when I started this, you know, one of the things that somebody would say to me that just would knock me back is like, they come in the cabin and the cabin's furnished, the refrigerator's full, the cupboards are full, they've got brand new linens, they've got a, a living room, they've got a kitchen, they've got a bathroom, you know, in their bedroom in these little 460 foot cabins. And Which is like a mansion to them. It is, yes. and they come in, and one of the things I hear the most is you don't know how nice it is to stand in a hot shower and be able to eat something when you get done. Because they just don't have that, that normalcy that we have, you know? And it's, it's hard for me to, to uh, I laugh at them and I say, well, how long do you stand in my shower? You know, how long do you stand in the shower? But that's one of the things that was the most impressive to me as services for them because it's something we take for granted every day. It does touch your heart. And then to be able to offer them the help they need, but they, a lot of them won't ask, they won't ask. And even if they've been here a while, I'll go say, I told Paul, one of the guys, I said, you know, we need to get you some clothes. 
well, what's wrong with these? Well, the t-shirt's holy, the pants are ripped up. He said, people pay a lot of money for these jeans with these holes in it. And he's right, but. And I said, yes. I said, but it's going to be cold here shortly, and you need to go, you know, get, I'm OK. So you have to kind of coax him into saying, you know, all right, I'll go get a few pair of pants out of the the thrift store or something, you know. But you know, it's a comfortable place here. When you walk in, you you feel there's a vibe that you're wanted here, that I can help. And of course, they'll get around to it if you give them long enough. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of activities and so forth. But I want to go back to the cabins because I'm so impressed with the way that they have, uh, well, the turnaround. It's like there's no comparison. How do you get a cabin? What does somebody have to do? Because I remember one time I heard you talk about the paperwork. You said, oh, we've got a mound of paperwork, but don't let it scare you. You know, when you get through, I'm going to know your sock size. <laughs> I do. I mean, our application is 26 pages long. Oh my goodness. And they have to provide their DD-2. They have to provide their income uh, confirmation, their social security benefits or food stamps or whatever. Everything is, is validated. We do background checks. Um, my best background check is my gut feeling. And I can walk up and I can meet somebody and I'm going, okay, you know, and then there's other people and I'll Oh, yesterday I said, Sean, you got to come talk because I've got this feeling, you know. But it's just, um, it's a long form, and I, t I promise them they're not joining the military <laughs> again when they fill it out. But it's got all of their information as far as their background with the military. It's got their high school information, their family information. Uh, any medical information is in there, and it's locked up safe in my office. It doesn't go anywhere. Nobody else sees it. But I've had emergencies on the property, and if the fire department comes and they say, you know, what can you tell me? I say, this is his medicines. This is what's happening. This is what's going on. If he's in uh, AA or counseling or whatever, I have that information. That's wonderful. And and I do, I mean, I know what size they take for, for socks because <laughs> I have a Christmas wish list <laughs> and I make them write all their sizes on it. But um, we have, a, we have a, you know, this paperwork and, and I have to have that information. And, and HIPAA is a big part of this Privacy Act. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like when you were on property and you guys are filming, I have to make the, I don't make them, but I ask them to sign a release. Exactly. It's like, without my permission, or not knowing who you're filming, that's very dangerous. Of somebody living on this property, they get no information out of me. That's and good to know, so people can feel we, comfortable and trust. We don't tell them what cabin they're in. The police have an issue, they know they gotta come through me. And, um, you know, I have a really good relationship with the police force and stuff for things that happen. And are all the cabins full? Mm -hmm. They're full right now. Yeah. Do you have a wait list? I have a waiting list. How big is it? Um, six to eight people usually. Really? Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I have no problem keeping them full. And every time someone leaves, then that cabin is cleaned, it's sanitized, it's refurnished. Um, and I, a lot of them take their furniture and things with them, don't when they? When they leave. But it was a part of the cabin, but you give it to them. Mm -hmm. And that's why the donations are so important, because it's, like I say, 460 square feet. Well, if someone moves out of that cabin and goes into an apartment or whatever, they need their, they take their bed, they take all the brand new linens we've given them, they take their living room set, and some of the guys will say, I want a couple recliners, or I'd rather have a sofa or a love seat. Love seat, sofas don't fit. Um, but anyway, um, so the dishes, the silverware, everything they have in there for food, everything goes with them. And that way they're not walking into an empty room saying, okay, now what do I do? Right, I don't have anything to that, start. Yeah, that doesn't help. If you're gonna throw them out and leave them hanging, that's not helping their process. You know, that's that's just not going to cut it. You're helping them from the ground up so right. that they have a good start. Yeah, and, and it, they're like teenagers. If their microwave goes out and they need something, they know to come home. 
you know. <laughs> and so, you know, most of the people that have left here at some point will come back and say, hey, I need this, I need that, whatever. And, and we do it. And then we clean the cabin and we start all over. Do you want two recliners? Do you want a love seat? You know, and we, we restart the next one. But we've had 114 transition. And, and so, actually it's 116. Um, but the, uh, the process of them healing, because they're individual cabins, they're not bunked with somebody else. They're not thrown into a group home or whatever, because they need that private, personal healing time. And, and I think that's why this is so perfect. It just gives them that space. And, and I tell them, look, if you can't make it here, you're not gonna make it out there. Because everything here is free. Their rent is free, their furnishings are free, if they need clothes or whatever from the thrift store is free. Um, their utilities, you know, gas, electric, water that we take for granted, it's free. And so that gives them a chance to save money. We get them their benefit paperwork done. We can, I had a guy here that was 70 years old had never filed for Social Security. Oh my goodness. And he had been living in his car in the woods and it's like, wait a minute, you don't need to do that, you know. You know, I want to stop you right there for a moment because I think that we hear about the homeless. We hear about people that uh, don't have enough to eat and these other things. But if you don't know somebody, it's not really real to you. I hear people all the time say, you know, well, there's people standing at Walmart or uh, right at the corner of so-and-so, and they're trying to get money. Well, you know, there but by the grace of God go I because we don't know their story. And so many people say, I don't want to give because I, I'm afraid they'll use it in a bad way. But I was always taught that when you give somebody something and you do it for the right reason, it doesn't matter what they do with it because the intent you had is what matters. Mm -hmm. But here, you have a lot of people that need to come in, a lot of people that need help. So this means you're going to need a lot of money. And obviously people have been generous, but now that you have a new uh, debt. <laughs> a new debt, yes, a new debt. You need money again. And of course, it's going to really pay off because whatever people buy there, you know, you're still able to do this and meet whatever payment that is. How do people give you money? How does this work? Because you're a 501c3. Right now, we're going around and trying to make people aware of the tax credit. Okay, the tax credit, you can donate $400 a person or $800 a couple. And it comes, it's a credit on your state tax, and then it automatically lowers your income for your federal down to a lower level so you get a double benefit from a donation. And when people are filing their taxes, this is a good time. And you know where the money's going. It's staying on the mountain, you know. Um, for our people that are here. For our veterans, yes. for our people. Um, and we have a PayPal on our website, but they can just mail the check to the uh, Walking Down Ranch Post Office Box 804 in Concho, where we started, okay. Eight, and it's 85924. So they can mail a check, they can come in the office and drop, drop off a check, but um, the, the donations are what keeps us going. I mean, because it's, like I said, we have no grants. And, and like we're whoever trying. gave that couch, you yeah. know, that's a really nice couch. Oh, we have beautiful furniture and yeah. stuff that's donated and clothing. We get brand new clothes with price tags on them and, and like I say, our prices are so cheap, you know, uh, three or four dollars for a hoodie sweatshirt or a, a jacket or whatever. No reason to be cold. But nobody's going to be cold. We give away free coats and boots to anybody who needs them. We've got several businesses, Sweet Peas and Starbucks and different places like that that are doing food uh, drives like canned food drives and coat drives for us. And because of the Love Kitchen closing, we know our walk-in food demand is going to be high. Maggie, I think that everybody knows after uh, 
my sharing conversation with you today that you are the Florence Nightingale of the White Mountain Veterans. We're glad you're here. I know that a lot of people have things to give away because a lot of people are leaving this time of year. Mm -hmm. You know, some people rented stuff, they took off, or you just find you're moving, but they can bring it here because it has a good use. Tell us what the hours are and the three different buildings that we're talking about. Okay, the Veteran Outreach Center is open Tuesday, Monday through Thursday from 10 to 3, and we may expand that down the road. Okay. The office, I am usually in here from 9 until 4 every day, Monday through Saturday. And then the thrift store is open from 10 until 4, Tuesday through Saturday. And they take donations on Tuesday and Thursday. And so there, there's so many good things in there to find. and. Uh, the donations are what keeps us going over there. So, Well, you heard it today. You may not have realized what the needs are of the veterans in the White Mountains, but now you know. And I just have to say, the love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love till you give it away. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you.